Hello friends and welcome back to the fourth tutorial of biology section from AIPMT 2009 question paper. So today I want to share something with you. Guys you know sometimes what happens is we just don't feel like studying like oh today I don't have mood so I'll study from tomorrow and we keep on procrastinating our works which needs to be done today itself. So I mind you please don't do this. You know, you'd have heard the saying that time and tide wait for none. And actually it's true. So please don't waste your time and no matter how you feel, just get up, dress up, show up and never give up until you crack neat. Remember, very few days are left and you have to keep on working hard to reach your target. So, we won't waste any more time and we will start with question number 41 which is Reduction in vascular tissue, mechanical tissue and cuticle is characteristic of which of the following plants? So, I hope your answer was right. The correct answer is option number 1 that is hydrophytes. Here you can see all the four types of plants. The hydrophytes, xerophytes, mesophytes and the epiphytes. So in hydrophytes actually since these plants remain all the time in water say like lotus so they do not need vascular system to conduct water. Suppose lotus is there it remains all the time in water so it does not need any type of vascular system for the conduction of water and the second point that is the mechanical tissue guys as you can see these hydrophytes they simply float on the surface of water and that's the reason they do not need any mechanical support and hence the mechanical tissue the third one that is the cuticle actually cuticle is a type of layer which is present on the leaves of land plants to prevent the excess evaporation of water which does not require in hydrophytes. Why? Because they have ample amount of water and like the land plants and hence they do not require the cuticle. I hope this point is clear to you and the rest type of plants that is xerophytes which grows in desert areas, mesophytes simple land plants which grows on land, epiphytes are somewhat special these are the types of plants which grows on other trees or some bigger plants. As you can see, this small green plant has grown over the branch of this tree. I hope this point is clear to you. Now we are moving on to the next question that, that is question number 42 which is Anatomically, fairly old dicotyledonous root is distinguished from the dicotyledonous stem by which of the following? I hope you can guess it. It's a very easy question. Guys, the right answer for this question is option number 1. So, by the position of protoxylum, you can guess whether the plant is root or whether the portion given to you is dicotyledonous root or the dicotyledonous stem. Here you can also see the diagram of dicotyledonous stem and the dicotyledonous root. In stem what happens, the protoxylum lies towards the center that is the pith and the metaxylum lies towards the periphery of the organ. And this type of uh, arrangement is also called as the endark type of arrangement. Whereas in root what happens, the protoxylum lies towards the periphery and the metaxylum lies towards the center. And such type of arrangement is called the exar type of arrangement. I hope this point is clear to you. Analyze this diagram carefully. Now we are moving on to the next question that is question number 43. Cyclic photophosphorylation results in the formation of which of the following? So guys, the right answer for this question is option number 1. The cyclic photophosphorylation results in the formation of ATP, whereas in non-cyclic photophosphorylation, ATP as well as NADPH both are formed. Now we are moving on to the next question, that is question number 44. 
In a standard ECG, which one of the following alphabets is the correct representation of the respective activity of the human heart? It's a very easy question and if you have observed the ECG carefully, you can answer this question very easily. So friends, once again the right answer is option number 1. The P wave represents the depolarization of art atria. Here you can see, this is the diagram of a standard ECG and this P wave represents the electrical excitation or say depolarization of the atria. This QRS complex, what it shows, it shows the depolarization of the ventricles. Depolarization basically means the contraction of the that portion of the heart. This T wave which comes the last, it represents the return of the ventricles from excited to normal state that is the repolarization. So repolarization basically means relaxation. I hope this point is clear to you. Now the next question is question number 45 that is uric acid is the chief nitrogenous component of the excretory products of which of the following? I hope you would have got it right. The correct answer is option number 4 that is cockroach. Actually cockroach is a uricotelic animal and in this the chief excretory product is uric acid and there are some more examples in which the excretory product is, is uric acid and the organisms are called uricotelic. These are various reptiles, birds, land snails, insects and they all excrete uric acid. There are two more types of excretory products which is the urea which is excreted by mammals, terrestrial amphibians and some marine fishes. Remember uric acid is the least toxic substance which is excreted from the body and the third one which I am going to say is ammonia. This one is the most toxic excretory product and it is usually released by bony fishes, aquatic amphibians and some aquatic insects. Now I hope this is clear to you. Please remember all the examples. It can be asked in your exam. Now the next question is question number 46 that is which one of the following pairs of food compounds in humans reaches the stomach totally undigested? Guys, it's a very easy question. Please do try to answer it. The right answer is option number 4. Actually, what happens? The cellulose is never digested in the human body. They are only digested in some green uh, grazing animals such as cows, goats, etc. And why? Because they have a bacteria in their alimentary canal which produces an enzyme which can break the beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds which are present in cellulose. Whereas in our body, for the digestion of uh, this carbohydrate, amylase enzyme is present in mouth as well as in small intestine. So the starch contains since alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So this amylase is able to break those bonds. Whereas it can't break the beta 1,4 glycosidic bonds which are present in cellulose. And hence the cellulose is not digested in human body. Now we are coming to fat. Now this fat is neither digested in food, uh, sorry, neither digested in mouth and nor in stomach. It is digested in small intestine with the help of bile pigments and these bile pigments break the fat molecules into diglycerides and further into monoglycerides. I hope this point is clear to you and protein as you know is digested in the stomach with the help of pepsinogen enzyme. Now the next question is question number 47. Which one of the following is correct pairing of a body part and like kind of muscle tissue that moves it? So please do try to find the right answer. So guys the right answer is option number one that is iris contains involuntary smooth muscle. That is the muscle which is present in iris cannot be controlled by your will or wish. The heart wall contains involuntary striated muscles. 
the biceps biceps of upper arm contain the skeleton muscle and abdominal wall contain the oblique muscles i hope this is clear to you now we are moving on to the next question that is question number 48 so compared to blood our lymph has which of the following so friends the right answer for this question is option number 4 actually if lymph you would have seen is a colorless fluid which contains no rbcs but more amount of wbcs and lymphocytes and hence on the basis of the lymphocytes this name has been kept lymph it also contains various dust particles bacteria and various harmful organisms which are drained by the lymphatic system this sometimes also contain the cancer causing cells now the next question is question number 49 what will happen if the stretch receptors of the urinary bladder wall are totally removed you can imagine on your own and you can answer it please don't panic if your answer is wrong The right answer is option number one. That is, there will be no micturition. So, are you shocked? There is no need for that. I will tell you how it is. Actually, the stretch re- uh, receptors, what they do, they are present on the urinary wall of the this on wall of the urinary bladder. And what they do when this bladder is totally full, they send the message to the brain that. the urinary bladder is full and the micturition or the removal of urine is needed to be done now what the question is saying these receptors are totally removed so now what will happen even if the urinary bladder is totally filled the signal will not reach the brain that the uh, bladder is full and hence what happens the micturition will not take place remember it's only an imaginary situation nothing like this is going to happen in reality so we are moving on to the next question that is question number 50 which part of human brain is concerned with the regulation of body temperature it's a very easy question i hope you answer it correctly so friends the right answer is option number 1 that is hypothalamus see if this is the structure of your brain this is where the hypothalamus is present and the rest organs which are present in brain the rest of the parts medulla oblongata has got the control centers of various systems for example respiratory and digestive systems the cerebellum performs various involuntary functions for example if you are running or walking you don't need to stress your brain that you are walking and how you have to take step so this part that is cerebellum controls your walking or running when you are not aware of it and cerebellum as you can recall it maintains uh, the various postures and it controls all the major functions which your body perform including creativity thinking memory etc speech too now so here the tutorial ends Thank you for watching this tutorial and if you liked it and found it informative please do rate it and if you have any doubts please ask them in the comment sections if you have any feedback or any suggestions you can also tell that to me in the comment section so keep working hard and i hope you reach your goal so good luck all the best bye bye